I see the red button. Hello and welcome. Today is August 5th. It is a Wednesday in 2020. What a wonderful <laughs> day. It's a nice shiny day here. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, I'll be your host for today's SMI community meeting. Uh, hello and welcome to everybody who's here. If you would, we place the agenda uh, link in the chat. If you would love to go and add your name as attendees there and where you're coming from, we'd love to see you. Redbeard gets a, a call out in the chat immediately. Hey Redbeard, nice to see you. Uh, we have a pretty pretty light agenda here, so let's go ahead and get into it because this is a very tight meeting. Um, first of all, we have a review community blog post, building an alternative service mesh, a novel approach using, service, uh, using SMI spec by uh, Kevin Crawley. So what um, needs to be done here? What I'm really excited because this is the first contributed blog post. Yay, thank you so much. So everyone else should write one too for all the stuff you're doing. But Kevin has the honor of being the first person to put one in. And what we did write in our guidelines um, was that it would be great if we can get two people who don't work at the same employer uh, as Kevin, uh, whichever employer that is, but get two people to read it and upvote it as like, yes, we would like this on our blog. Or say, hmm, this seems to be a vendor pitch, or which it didn't seem to be to me, but I figure you experts should read it and assess it with your opinions and say, hmm, this seems like it is a great thing that we would like talking about what this particular person does with SMI. Anyway, that we're trialing this as a new process. So if everyone who has opinions about blog posts wants to go read that and put their comments on it, then we can hopefully get that out on the blog post and it'll be exciting. So yeah, that was all for that one. Excellent. Oh, Thank and you, also Bridget. write your own blog posts. <laughs> yes, so if you have your own blog post, write them. There are some guidelines. I want to thank uh, Kevin for being the first one to have a community contributed blog post. I love the transparency of folks being able to do this. And obviously, Bridget set up some guidelines there, and we will uh, implement the blog by committee. So you all have the power to plus one this and get it out there on the blog. So um, excellent. Thank you, Kevin, for getting that in. If anybody has a few moments, it's not a big read, um, and we'll get it out there on the, the blog site. Okay, anything else we need to discuss there, Bridget? All right, SMI conformance tooling with Lee. Pass it to you, Lee. Hey, Lee. All right, great. Well, this has been a topic that we've discussed uh, uh, maybe too long. Uh, we're finally uh, at a point by which uh, some people weighed in, oh, geez, wow, oh, there's more to talk about than we have time for, which is uh, good and bad, but um, what we've been working toward is the issue number, I think, 70, so, so it's been a little while. Um, I recognize there's a few folks on the call that maybe, yeah, that, that weren't here when we initially raised this, uh, and that's to say that SMI, like any other specification, is in need of some tooling to va validate conformance. So, you know, those, those service meshes that in this case that are participating, um, you know, need a, we need to define you know, as, a, as a group a suite of tests that, that we you know, say, hey, if, if these things are, if the mesh does this and it looks like this, then it's conformant. And, and so in order to do that, um, there are where, well, if you're familiar with Sonoboy of sort of, you know, toward yeah, then, you know, hey, it's of the similar principle. In this case, things get a little more hairy in, in so much as um, what you need is some tooling to provision the mesh, to provision uh, a sample app, to provision SMI um, CRDs, uh, to then, to in some cases, generate load to, you know, for traffic metrics, like validate that, in fact, what you, you know, the load that was presented is what's being reported on, the statistics are accurate. So there's actually like quite a big test harness around that. And so in starting the, you know, in setting out to do that, we, we've lever and also there are, you know, N number of service meshes and counting that, um, uh, that claim SMI conformance. Um, uh, therefore, yeah, we went off to, we grabbed uh, Meshery as a service mesh management plane to, facilitate for much of this, uh, which it already um, does. The, the tooling itself, when you think about this project, it needs to have things like, we need to be able to 
verify provenance of tests that are performed so that someone doesn't necessarily cheat, cheat the exam and then and kind of claim compatibility. Uh, and so that's also accounted for kind of in, in, the, in the design spec. The issue that's linked in the meeting minutes, it has a link to the design spec that we've we brought up. Um, there've been, you know, probably to date, only light uh, comments and suggestions, I think, from uh, maintainers that are, that are here. Uh, what I was hopeful to do today is to, is to demo the progress that the set of contributors um, that have been working on this have made. They are busily working on fixing a bug uh, on a different call right now. So I just, so I'm gonna poke them and ask them to come on, but it's, but there's quite a lot to talk about outside of, uh, of a demo. Um, part of the goal, and actually here, let me bring up and share the spec, because uh, I think talking about the, des the project goals, that there's merit in that. Part of those goals is to, oops, part of those goals is to have what's going on with Zoom. Is there something else we should definitely link so people can review it? Yeah. I went to that issue, but I think you you want to show right. us something else. Sorry. Yeah, totally. Yeah, thank you. I want to make sure I capture it. Yeah, if you click on the issue here um it has a link to a design spec and here is that link to the design spec too i thought i had it up I was gonna... yeah please please do bring that up um i'm having an issue with uh, here we go all right fair enough Here's the design spec. It talks, it goes on for a while, kind of talks about the, the goals and, and the notion that there would be a public facing you know, report that um, you know, sort of sanctifies conformance. Um, a couple of concepts that are probably worth verbally chatting through. So one of those is, well, well what is conformance? It's like, well, you know, cl clearly there's like you know, a set of tests to, to perform. Those tests are in their infancy. You know, I think there's like 30 of them, but they need to be fully reviewed by folks that are here and many more of them put in or some taken away or, but what we've tried to do is make sure we've got the right um, vehicle for execution and kind of reporting. In defining conformance, um, last time that we gave this an earnest discussion in this call, what we ended up talking about was the notion that, well, not all of the meshes necessarily intend to implement, fully implement all of what SMI defines. Um, and that's by their design. And so does that mean that they should be, they should always carry a red, does that mean that they could never be SMI compliant? And so trying to put some particulars around the terms that are used that in this case, what we're suggesting, suggesting is that conformance is a combination of the capabilities um, of a given mesh with respect to what at the SMI specs to say that, hey, this mesh has full, you know, for example, full, full, fully meets this spec, has full capability. Maybe it only partially meets it, or maybe, maybe it doesn't. And, and the difference here is like, whether or not they ever intend to potentially like, or, or, or maybe, maybe that's not the difference. The difference is just, again, like whether or not they've, they've done it and then whether or not they comply. So if the capability is present, do they comply with uh, the spec itself, the interface? Uh, that's worth highlighting. Other things that are worth highlighting is that there's a, a, a number of tests that have been defined uh, that are broken down into four different test sets, one test set for each um, spec. Within those test sets, kind of two categories of tests. One that very simply um, runs an assertion for the presence of, a cust of an SMI custom resource. And then the others are more about the capability that we were just referring to, like, so functionally, is the, is the implementation responding according to the spec? These um, tests, they're, they're sort of, they're, they're written, you know, verbally here, or not verbally, they're, they're written here, but they're defined in, in YAML in the, in the utility, in the project. Um, 
uh, other things to sort of key concepts, I think, are like, hey, the, the notion that after those tests are run, the collection of them, and then sort of the, the presentation of them, um, Meshery facilitates for an, an SMI-owned um, uh, re repository of that of the of those result sets the intention is for each of the participating service meshes to uh, run meshery in their either in their build and release process you know run this utility in, in that process and um, have a sanctified hey, Lee, yeah. quick clarifying question you just said smi repository but this sounds available like people can put this against any repository that they have a mesh they want to test right yeah or it doesn't have to be in the in the SMI um, right. repo. Yeah, okay, that's, awesome. Yeah, that's right. I used the, boy. That's a loaded word. What I meant to say is that if if the you know as a group, if we're so desirous of putting so 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 Bridget to what Bridget just said, folks can go run the tests and and put put up their results, just, you know, on, onto their own. If this group is desirous of having a an SMI published uh, version of those those test results and sort of have it centrally stored. And I use the word repository, but I just meant like uh, have a central location for each of the participating service meshes to send their results and have the provenance of those results kind of guaranteed that there's been some, there's been consideration for that. And that would be that each of the projects as they have, they would identify a service account or a robot account, if you will, that they say, hey, for us, you know, we, we use this service account, so we will we will authenticate with this one, and you will expect, and we will send tests under that account. Now, that doesn't mean that they couldn't kind of take this concept one step further. That doesn't mean that they couldn't fork this open source project, you know, manipulate the bits so that they're all passing results. And so, to mitigate, I don't think that this is really a concern, but just like to mitigate that, there's a a shared secret inside of the CI, the build process for this utility, which then um, is only known in that CI process. And so it too will be validated as, as part of receiving those results. So, so and then- So, uh, yeah. uh, Lee, can I just uh, dive in here? Cause we do have short time. I um, wanna just drive, what do you think the best uh, next steps are here for everybody? Is it reviewing this document or running the tool? I just, what's the call to action would be? Um, yeah. The what I would that, like you to ask. Oh, very good. Yeah, thanks for that. The one that is would be no, the, mo the most helpful and where the collective brain trust here is, you know, a better, it, it would, would serve this the best is in uh, this section here, conformance test definitions. So are, are these the things that need to be tested? Does this, you know, do we have full coverage of SMI's specified functionality? Yeah, so reviewing the doc and, and all of it is great, but um, specifically. So is, is the way that you're operating with the tool, you're basically pseudo coding the desired behavior and making assertions about the state, and then you're, you're building that into the tool as a set of tests. Correct, and the tests okay. are defined in YAML, and then the tool, the tool says, well, this, you know, this is what I expect to see. Do I see that? You know, okay. Yeah. And so, hey Lee, um, how much of this tool is already built? Does it exist? Um, yeah, we well, we were going to demo today, and I, actually, I don't know if there are folks that I are think, on. But, yeah. Do we? Okay. Can you see if, are there folks who can provide a demo? Otherwise, we can go to the next agenda item and then come back to this, Lee, and give five minutes at the end if that sure, makes yeah. sense. Uh, uh, and just, I was wondering, where can we look at the code and um, where is the tool and the test to find um, and the demo app? Totally. Let me Whatever drop the, in the... Yeah, if you throw it in chat or in the agenda, that would be great. Very good. I'll drop it into the agenda. But this is this is excellent. It's great to see this come along. Um, and I know tireless efforts have been made on your your front to get this working, but I think conformance is something that's going to become a a really big stepping stone for all the service meshes out there. And, you know, as the APIs develop. So I just want to thank you and the team of folks that have been working on it to get it this far, um, because I think it's actually going to be very pivotal. So I'd like to put some effort into helping you build out the test suites and then even running 
and putting, you know, on behalf of the community, publishing results and conformance results up there, just like, you know, Kubernetes, for example, have a conformance directory to specific APIs and things like that. Beautiful. Any other comments for Lee? Okay, I will leave it to you to get us the, the links and everything in the agenda. Put those in. Yeah. Okay, and let us know, let us know in chat if you've got folks who want to do a demo. I'll let you give you five minutes at the end. They, they were, you know what, they, I, I saw a couple of them on, and then when you yep. said, if you see their name in the demo, they are in the, they dropped out. They, yeah, they, I think. When they said, you're going to demo, they left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Well, I mean, we can we can add it to the agenda for next time if that makes sense too. Just let us know. Okay. Um, thanks, Lee. Um, Michelle, the next item is Michelle updates. Uh, hey, um, I, I cut a quick bug fix release of the SDK, uh, and I'm using the latest release and haven't run into any issues. So um, you may want to update if you haven't already. Um, also, uh, today we are announcing um, uh, and a new service mesh implementation called Open Service Mesh. Uh, it is Envoy based um, and SMI native, and so we're excited to add that to the SMI community. Um, I'll drop a link in the chat. Uh, so, a lot of the Azure networking folks um, that have been on this call for the last several months. Uh, have been working on that as well as the upstream team at Microsoft that contributes to open source projects and the Kubernetes and container space has also been working on that. I've been helping. So um, yeah, that's that's a thing. And so uh, the plan is to submit it to CNCF as a sandbox project ASAP so we can work on it as a vendor neutral um, thing in a vendor neutral IP space. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Anybody else from the team want to add anything? Okay, uh, feel free to ping me with any questions or anything like that. I'm happy to answer. Uh, thanks for all the congrats. Hey, Michelle, um, I, I've seen your proposal on renaming the traffic access uh, customization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from traffic target to traffic access? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah I think it's a, it's a great idea. Okay. Less confusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the access API with or API group with the traffic target resource, and it's just like very confusing. We should rename specs too, <laughs> but one thing at a time. Okay, cool. Uh, you already responded on that issue. I can uh, help kick off uh, more discussion and consensus around that. Yeah, I'll 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 comment on it. I I think it's a great idea. Okay, cool. Anybody else have any thoughts around um, uh, renaming traffic target to traffic access? Okay, cool. And for anybody who's new or doesn't remember, you know, traffic target is a thing that defines, it's a resource that defines which sources can talk to which destination on which set of uh, rules like uh, HTTP routes, uh, matching specific um, headers, things like that. So, so with 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 which rules? So it kind of makes sense to call it traffic access resource. Uh, but if any anybody have, has any thoughts, there's an open issue about it. I'll drop a link to that as well. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, that is the end of the stated agenda. I'll open it up for any other business. Quick question on the open service mesh uh, implementation. Go ahead. Um, congrats. I'm just looking at the, at the docs and I, I've seen that um, even if it's Envoy based, the ingress implementation relies on Nginx ingress. Uh, any plans on making an Envoy ingress work, like something like Contour, which is a CNCF project? Uh, yes, we also have um, a, 
uh, instructions for AGIC. Uh, and AGIC, I believe, is Envoy based. Correct me if I'm wrong, Zellian. Yeah, you know, so uh, good question, Stefan. So uh, the, the service mesh itself, the implementation right now is kind of agnostic to ingress. Uh, you bring in your own um, and we observe the ingress resource uh, and poke holes on the appropriate envoys. Uh, so you can bring whatever you, uh, you want. Uh, if we mention Nginx is probably just an example. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, for me, it's more about integrating with an existing Envoy Ingress implementation there. So you can use Xdex to inject the certificates. That's Yeah, I think from less my hacky. perspective is, yeah, absolutely. I think from my perspective is we didn't want to lead with an, another hacked up Ingress implementation that was purpose built for OSM. But rather, I know, you know, Solo has done a lot of work in this area. This learnings in Istio for certain, you probably have a lot of feedback. So it would be more interesting to us to use OSM to try and feel out what the right ingress solution would be or a set of ingress solutions, um, because we didn't want to go throw, throw another one into the pot um, without using SMI as a place to discuss that, because we do know that that's come up on multiple occasions. So um, if you're interested, we could we could start feeling that out but we didn't want to go and say, well, here's Contour and here's a completely new arbitrary API that we're just introducing and, you know, mm -hmm. but rather let's go and figure it out in SMI and then just bring it back down into OSM. Cool. Thank you. I'll jokingly say, man, you had to call it or had to have the same exact acronym as OpenShift Service Mesh. Oh my gosh, I didn't actually consider that. <laughs> so you've got open service mesh and open shift service mesh. But Did open shift service mesh exist when we ran this through the naming council? Uh, it's existed. For kind of a question for Microsoft people. I'm like, I'm not sure when that came about. To be honest, uh, we were on a call and somebody just said, let's call it open service mesh. And we were like really busy working on the projects. We were like, I, we don't care. Like, it's fine. Just call it whatever you want. Yeah. If, if you want the how the sausage is made, as it turns out, when you work at a large company, sometimes people who are not you will veto every hilarious name. Oh. I but you can get non-hilarious names through pretty easily. That, to be quite fair... That's part of the reason why a couple of years ago I said, let's just call it OpenShift Service Mesh. There's nobody who can really argue with that. <laughs> yep. We, we also, uh, I, I will admit, I secretly pronounce OSM. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, but yeah, Brian, uh, yeah. really want to get that Kiali integration, so. Well, I'm, yeah, I, so. Speaking of that, Maltron, who is the product manager for Kiali, is actually on the call here. So, awesome. um, you know, it's a good moment for, you know, kind of him to be able to talk a little bit to, uh, you know, some of Kiali's thoughts on this, as well as, uh, um, you know, uh, introduction so that everybody knows who to bug and who to ask for things. So, Maltron, you want to? Introduce yeah, go ahead. Hi. Go ahead. Do you want me to say something about Kiali on what was the question? Sorry. Uh, Michelle was pointing out that they're excited for Kiali's involvement with SMI and the relation to open service mesh. And I was merely pointing out that you were on the call and, you know, said you should oh, okay. say hello to <laughs> so hello everybody i think I, I talked to michelle a long time ago and we started uh, uh evaluating smi and, and sounds to me a really uh, prominent uh, kind of project that we should be looking into and of course uh there's some other priorities we have to work on but smi is is, is one of them that we actually still looking at and and understand exactly how we can implement it into the Kiali plans. 
that uh, as in now there's no uh, hard commitments. Yeah, I think I've heard on the, well, hello, Maltron, and welcome. Um, I think I've heard on the call several times that the Linkerd folks were extremely interested in figuring out how to get Kiali to work on Linkerd. And they have done a lot of work in shipping the metrics infrastructure that supports SMI in Kubernetes. So there's, however we can help you get the information you need to actually make Kiali useful by leveraging SMI, um, you know, we're all here for you as implementers to meet you in the middle. But there seems to right. be broad agreement that uh, Kiali is a very useful tool for service meshes. And we want to enable that ecosystem much similar to what Stefan is doing with Flagger. We want to have tools built on top of SMI because I think that's more important than um, just SMI in itself. You need to have ecosystem tools that actually leverage that and make it useful. So okay. don't take what's in the metrics as, you know, done. If there's things that you're like, hey, we need these five other things, let's start poking holes because you have an implementation. We need to figure out what you need to get out of these um, service meshes so you can actually build the dashboard. So don't, whatever's there is not complete. Let me tell you that. And nobody's implemented a tool to your, to what Kiali has on top of metrics at this point. So I, I imagine we're going to need to add a lot of surface area Right. Let me let me tell you one particular thing is kind of important to us. Uh, ever since we start to evaluate the SMI, it's uh, there's one particular missing part, which is the Istio part, and uh, we haven't seen much contributions uh, in the Intel Istio adapter, uh, except for those folks here in this call. But uh, we kind of miss people or engagement from Google or even IBM into that. And that would make a significant uh, 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 change for us, especially into contribution. Okay, so what I'm hearing is more support for the Istio adapter directly would help Kiali Absolutely. plug into this. Okay. That's great feedback. All right, we're at the top of our time. Um, our next meeting is at this time in two weeks time. If you would love to moderate that, um, please feel free to throw something in chat the next 30 seconds. It's very easy to moderate. Even, you know, a trained monkey like me can do it. Um, <laughs> they train me well. Um, don't worry, they feed me bananas. Um, but uh, it, it's really helpful and it gives, you know, the community meetings a lot of uh, different personalities and, and I would really appreciate it if folks step up there. There's nothing secret and I'm happy to help if people are interested. Um, other than that, have a wonderful day and it was lovely to see you all. Thanks for all the agenda items and we'll see you at the next call. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.